Steve, I got to talk to you about this game next. And this is where we're going to end off five for Friday. This is in my mind when I saw this on this on the slate. This is like the Super Bowl of FCS. And we're getting it in the middle of the season. Like this is the when you think of FCS because of where t- teams have drafted quarterbacks from FCS in the past in the NFL, you think of these schools. And this is a big rivalry right now. South Dakota State takes on North Dakota State. This is going to determine who is the best team in the country. I I, I know that Montana deserves that number one spot, but if someone makes a statement in this football game, I will take back what I think about Montana. Even if Montana makes a statement himself, when you have top teams, you know, going face to face, we're seeing we're seeing it in the Power Five this week with Alabama and Tennessee. If they find a way to make a statement, they deserve to be the top team in their league. What do you think? Oh, absolutely. And this is only the second time in the FCS era that the number one and number two ranked teams, and again, people in Missoula and Helena and Billings, okay, I understand that there are polls that are saying that Montana is the number two team in the country. We have to base it on the NCAA you know, websites and the more established, you know, websites for right now, it's one versus two. So it's only Mm -hmm. the second time in the FCS era. And we're probably going to see again, upsetting the people in the Montana market. These two teams, again, in the FCS championship game, quite possible. Yeah. I tweeted, I think two or three weeks ago that I think I needed to adopt the North Dakota state bisons as my my 2022 FCS team to follow. I mean, my Princeton Tigers aren't quite, <laughs> uh, you know, the side. I mean, they're having an okay year, but I mean, you know, they've, you know, they're not quite uh, the uh, power and, and defending champ. That they haven't, they haven't lost yet. We'll see how they do tonight against Brown, but they haven't lost yeah. yet. I really think having watched both of these teams each of the last three weeks, that South Dakota State has what it takes to take down the Bisons. How many number one teams in the country at any division? I don't care if you're talking NAIA, you know, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. How many teams have a quarterback that took until Week Five to throw a 200-yard game? Yeah, so probably not many. That's North Dakota State. Now, again, they have just an amazing running game. You know, and that's led by, I want to say, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong, but uh, Hunter Lupke, or it might be Lepke. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. You know, he's been pretty consistent. They have actually, they have a, a three or four backs that are that are punishing, can hit the holes, you know, that, that can get the big yards when it's needed. It's not that Cam Miller is playing badly for North Dakota State, but I mean, they're focusing on the running game. They have a bruising, punishing defense, so they don't necessarily have to air it out. This isn't the Big Sky or Missouri Valley Conference where teams like, uh, you know, well, where they they like to, as a rule. Again, this is a Missouri Valley game, but as a rule, they like to air it out. This is not a typical team in North Dakota State. South Dakota State has a trio of receivers. That even our beloved roadrunners would have to say, boy, these guys are good. These guys are really, really good. They have a pair of twins that literally have, on a career, have over 2,400 receiving yards, 19 career touchdowns. The South Dakota State defense can be smothering at times, even against elite rushing attacks. So I'm going to come out and say right here. Even though North Dakota State does a great job of being patient on offense and by, and just beating you down on defense, there will be a new number one team in the FCS next week, and it's going to be the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. I like it. Hey, last two weeks, South Dakota has allowed 111 rushing yards in the last two weeks. That's not per game. They allowed 92 last week, and they allowed 19 the week before. The closest game they've had all season was against UC Davis in week two. They allowed 49 rushing yards. North Dakota State is known for that running football, just like you said. Miller didn't have to do a lot. He's going to have to do a lot this week. He's going to. It's going to be in his hands a lot more. He's only had one interception this year, 
Is this times? Is this the time where he starts making some mistakes? I think that's where it really comes down to for me to see if North Dakota State can win this football game. Miller's going to have to make some decisions that he hasn't had to make all year. He's going to be forced to make some throws that he probably hasn't had to make all year. And do they t- become successful or do they turn into mistakes? Because I do think that they're going to stop the run. Just based on what we've seen in the past few weeks, I think they haven't let up a hundred yard rusher in three weeks. I think three weeks ago, they were about 120. I think it was, or something like that, 140. But that's even, that's still not that bad. That's still not North Dakota state numbers. I think they'll find a way to get close to a hundred because North Dakota state is not going to, you know, go away from the run very no. fast. That's, that is their bread and butter. That is their meat and potatoes. That is exactly what they're going to stick with. And when you are a top team in the country, you don't stray. You don't run away from things that you know you're good at. But I think there's going to be a moment in time when they're either down in the football game or they're going to realize they have to make adjustments. Maybe it's after halftime. Maybe it's you know maybe it's a close game, but maybe they realize hey we got to do something different in this football game if we want to you know leave on top. And that's where those moments are going to happen. So that's what I'm really looking forward to. I'll lean towards South Dakota State with you too because I do like that run defense. And that's what's really pointed me in the right direction on that one. This is going to be a great football game. Again, ESPN Plus is where you can find this one. This one's at 3.30 Eastern. This is a really good game to watch. If you can't watch it live, get ESPN Plus, watch the replay. Because it's worth it. All games on ESPN, if you have ESPN Plus, you can watch the replay. It's one of the greatest things in the world. Yeah, and then just to temper people that like, oh, great. It's going to be snow in the Midwest this year. It's going to be this week. It's going to be cold. It is played in a dome. It's, it's a dome game, so you, you can see all the snow and blizzards you want out in the Dakotas. It, it's not going to affect uh, the game itself. North Dakota State has shown, again, games against Youngstown State that I watched pretty much every down, whether it be live or going back and watching the game in its entirety. Every opponent, even when it's close, they are stubborn and they stick to it and they just try to run the ball down your throat. I I wonder what it will take, as you alluded to, to get them out of that mindset and throw the ball. It's got to be a way that they just got to be them stopping the run. But just when, how far into the game? Uh, I would put my money on after halftime. Because I think this is a game that we're going to be paying attention to to the very end. Mm-hmm. And it might come down to a Miller turnover. Or it might not, and that might be the deciding factor. If I had to put money on how it ends, North Dakota State quarterback is the one that's going to be the game changer for me in this football game, 100%.